Hello everyone, Wanderer here. Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. It has been a long time, guys, since I have been in New Vegas, and I am very pleased to say that after a bit of frustration and tweaking, I have gotten everything running really, really well. Of course, I had a computer reinstall, basically reinstall Windows and everything else that went with it uh, a while back, and so that caused some problems for me. But luckily I've got everything set up and good to go here. I'm just sorting through my inventory here. I've got a lot of stuff here I need to maybe get rid of because there's just no way I can carry all this stuff with me really. Um, on my way over to start the Old World Blues. So we're going to be doing that. Making sure I have plenty of stim packs. I don't think I'll need 124 stim packs probably. Maybe, maybe like, you know... 40 or so ought to be good. Yeah, that kind of takes my weight down a bit there. That helps out a bit. Uh, these weapon kits uh, as well, maybe a couple of those. Probably don't need all of those. At the end of my last stream, I was having a lot of issues with New Vegas, and it was really frustrating. It really put me off of playing the game for a bit here, and I am very happy to report that I think I have fixed all of those issues. So, uh, number one, the biggest issue, the biggest thorn on my side... I think in New Vegas in general was just how kind of janky and clunky the game felt and I think a lot of that honestly came from the fact that I was not really getting good consistent 60 FPS and I have found a fix for that and the fix was simply to um, well to go into windowed mode so I'm in windowed full screen mode I had to get a mod for that called uh, one, t one tweak I believe it's called and that allows me to go into full screen windowed mode then I had to go into my actual any file and mainly set my my resolution because normally you can't go above 1080p so I had to do all that but you can see like it runs so flipping good with this with this on like I, I don't have any stuttering there's no stuttering at all uh, it runs fantastic it's very very smooth it just it just feels so much better to play and I'm really really happy with how it's playing right now so we're gonna be fast traveling down to, let's see, down to the Mojave Drive-In. This is for the Old World Blues quest. I believe I've not done it yet. Don't know anything about it. We're going to be going to the Midnight Science Fiction feature down at the Mojave Drive-In. Um, how is, actually, hold on, before I go, like, how is our stuff here? Sleep, food, H2O, that's all fine. Um, I'll eat something once I get down there. So I'll see you guys once we're out there. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, so now we have this strange thing going on here. Let me see if I'm hungry or anything here. Once again... Yeah, could use some... Definitely could use some H2O and some stuff here. Should have brought some water, I guess, along. I don't really have any water here, do I? Oh, well, it's fine. Are we Are we good? Yeah, we're, we're good enough. Okay, so there's this thing going on. Um... Oh, okay. So the crash satellite seems to be the source of the strange transmission you received. Old World Blues is recommended for experienced careers level 15 plus. You have a premonition that while you'll be unable to return to the Mojave until you solve the mysteries of the Big Empty, you will be able to take anything you can carry with you and you will be able to return to the Big Empty at any time after completing the Old World Blues. If you are up to the challenge and you have all you want to carry with you, Examine the satellite a little closer. The atomic wonders of science await. Okay, sure. Oh, Veronica can't come with us. Okay, that's fine. We've lost Eddie as well. Okay, okay, fine. Well, that was dramatic. The Old World Blues. I've been told there are a lot of energy weapons here, so I'm excited to see what there is here. In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, 
force field particle research. Autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome. A huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the Big Empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question. Well, that certainly sounds like a lot of cool technological stuff. You feel strangely heavier. A quick inspection of your body reveals faint surgical scars around your head, chest, and back. Oh, what's happened to us? Patient gown added. Patient gown equipped. Welcome to the big empty. Um... We are we are naked, eh? Although we it appears that we have our weapons. So I I guess that's nice. Um do I still have my armor and stuff? Can I put that back on? Yeah, okay, cool. So you can put your stuff back on. You don't lose anything. Thank goodness. Down door to the sink. Okay, well I'm gonna look around a bit here first. So we we have been transported to this area, huh? Oh, this, this place looks cool as hell, man. This looks... This... You know what, guys? This is my expansion. This is going to be the fun one for me, I think. This looks like a really interesting one so far. Okay, let's grab a Nuka cola Might need that for some hydration. I think it gives you hydration. Um, not... I can't remember if it does or not. So both of these just go down the sink. Okay, let's go... To the sink, then, I guess. Oh, this is very cool, guys. Very, very cool. Oh, let's see. I got a workbench here. Yeah, let's, gonna, let's go ahead and uh, recycle some stuff. Why not? I can't do anything else here, so just exit. Sink Cellar Intelligence Unit. Book Shoot. Personality files, damage or missing, insert backup holotape to restore files. Okay, I don't have any backup holotapes just yet. Nice, some energy cells. It goes back outside. God, the game just runs so great. It just, it's, it's so nice, so refreshing. I do have, um, hold on, I might need to change one little thing real quick here, guys. Oh yes, the mouse sensitivity is way too low. Let me bump that up a bit. Much better. A quick save here. Oh, nice, good food. And, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of good stuff. Well, that's nice. They give you a whole bunch of stuff here. So you can, uh, get stocked up in case you forgot your water and stuff here. Like I did. Flour, wonder glue, more water. Nice. 
This is, I like this place, man. So far, the hospitality has been pretty good. So here is the sink auto dock. Okay, personality files are missing. So we've got think tank or big MT. Is that like big mountain? I am not sure. But before I exit, I want to look around a bit more. Yeah, because we got some stuff over here. Got some booze and some pills. Always fun. Take more ammo, because why not? A disabled jukebox. Personality files damaged or missing. Okay. If you say so, man. This requires a key. Duct tape and a wrench. Yeah, sure. We can always make some more. Oh, mad scientist scrubs. Very nice. Oh. Um. Hi there, muggy. I'm gonna go ahead and take all your cells and stuff here. And, uh, gonna pass in the book, I think, but the cap, sure. Got a safe here, so we can probably deposit our stuff here if we want to. Alright, let's see what, uh, Muggy has to say to us. Oh, we can't... Okay, so we can't do anything here. We can't do anything at all, apparently, because our personality files are missing. I have no idea what that means. I guess we'll find out. So we've got either the... Uh, okay, this... We can't go to Big MT yet. We, don't, we need a key. So I guess we have to go to Think Tank. There is but one place to go. A strange feeling of pacifism comes over you, and you find you cannot draw your weapon for some reason. Well... That's kind of BS, but hey, whatever. We got the smooth jazz playing. It must be the smooth jazz playing that's making us uh, be so calm. What is this room? I, I know there are some strange figures over here. Robots? I thought I heard the pacification fields kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder. You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain. The collective geniuses of... We... By Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, Eight? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. Eight is sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now... Now... Great. Now I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? I, um... So that's a brain. Are there multiple people inside of this guy? Let me see here. How are you all speaking through the, that one voice box? I was at a theater, then I was here. What is this place? Um, are you the ones that performed the surgery on me? Yeah, because I got a surgery. Um, uh, yeah, okay, let's do the... I was at the theater, and then I was here. What is this place? Did, did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite! Here, in the dome! Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse! Now we've got lobotomites! Dalla! Get the spray before it excretes all over everything! Lobotomite? As in I've been, uh, lobotomized? Okay, look, dude. I just woke up here all cut apart, and I want some answers. Dr. Klein, if my hypothesis is correct... This lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to. The skin envelope once containing it. If so, it's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dollar. I want to know why it's down here. With its... its limbs all over everything. 
And are those penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall the human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static, these lobotomies confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. I don't know how I like them talking about my toes and my penis and everything else, man. I just... what's going on here? Um, okay. Let me see here. Science or speech? Uh... Let's do a science check. Hold up one finger, point itself, point at them, hold up five fingers. Alright. Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. Oh my Dr. god. Clyde. Wait, I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Ace, have you been in the Mentats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are! As usual, Lobotomite. Do you understand me? Can you speak? Uh, let me see here. Yes, I'm guessing that crash highlight was yours. Who are you? What is this place? Uh, what I feel passive. Not to take the peach off. Uh, okay, yeah, um... I'm guessing the crash satellite was yours. Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. He's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. In playing God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled this skin envelope with awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait. If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us, then, this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein! A transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us! It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools! Oh, it is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is, yes, forbidden to you! Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine! Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain Research Centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius, and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? 
He's clearly let himself go. Ross, ask the lobotomy for help. A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent, perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. You removed my brain? How could you? We removed your brain, yes. So soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. So we got the brainless perk. Your brain has been replaced with advanced technologies. Your head can no longer be crippled and is resistant to chem addiction. So I get plus 25% chem resistance, chem addiction resistance, and shock from bodily damage. A plus 5% damage threshold, minimum plus one. Okay. Yeah, eight, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the, what, the, um, uh, the Tesla coils in its head. This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. So our brain, we're like, we're controlling our body remotely from our brain, which is stored somewhere in the big mountain, but not within the dome, because then we could bypass the, uh, the aggression dampening fields or whatever. So, uh, let's do medicine. It doesn't explain... The laser sutures on my chest and on my spine. Yeah, I've got sutures on my chest and spine, too. What's up with that? Darla, was it necessary this time? I assume full responsibility. I take my duties in the prodding and excision of living, breathing tissue quite seriously. Although, in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. What? They removed our heart? God, what else, man? So heartless perk. The scars on your chest seem to confirm that the, what the think tank is saying. You cannot be poisoned and filters in the... Your artificial blood pump will regulate bleeding and healing, allowing all healing items to function at a higher level. Robots are now confused by you and 50% less likely to score a critical hit. Okay. All right. This one I could uh, I could keep I think that'd be fine. Oh wait, I mean second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Spineless. We got we got our spine removed too. So due to complications with the procedure, your spine has been replaced as well. Your torso can no longer be crippled and your strength and damage threshold have been increased plus 1. Oh my gosh, okay. Crazy. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look 
save me with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. So you took my brain, my heart, and my spine. That auto dock junk heap was one of Mobius's creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius. Foosh! That is the sound of flushing. By the Fisher of Rolando, enough of this biological surgery talk. Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. With science, of course. All right, let me see. You said something about needing technologies to stop Mobius, or first, she's about my brain. I'm going to save you. Um, okay, you know what? Let's play along with this. The brain thing is unfortunate, but uh, the heart and spine thing are kind of nice, and uh, I'm willing to play along. It's not like I have any choice anyway. So, you said something about needing technologies to stop Mobius. Yes. It is our only chance, a desperate plan that came to us after Mobius's first broadcast. Maybe, just maybe, if we reclaim these buried technologies, we can put an end to Mobius and the horrors spawning from the Forbidden Zone. Okay, so what exactly is the plan? You're losing me in the generalities. I need specifics. The plan was very complicated. We are still calculating how it would work if it succeeded. That is our part of the plan. Okay, um, I'll help. What do you need me to do? Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, uh, transmit the... Radio map waves to settle down, eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right. Eight transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um, they well move sometimes, or get buried, or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. Not so much for me, though, huh? Hold on one second, guys. Got to turn my radio off, unfortunately. I don't want to get a copyright claim here. So, all right, uh, so this whole place sounds dangerous. These devices sound dangerous. Um, what are these technologies, though? I'm interested in what the technologies actually are at their offer. The technologies are the X2 transmitter antenna array used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. Because it's stealthy, right? And AIDS sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun. Able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. So, may I put my brain back in? Um, alright. What if I take my time? What illogic is this? Keep your filthy, penis-tipped feet out of our labs and secrets! 
There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. Shield your jellied eyes lest they burn from your skull. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I still want to go exploring, though. Doesn't sound like my style. Maybe I'll do a little exploring. You would not dare. Perhaps I can change your mind using the greatest of our sciences, the fence. The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts, and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Okay, so I can't go beyond the fence. Got it. Why can't you just go out there and shut them down, though? Out there? We're not going out there. It's dangerous. We're smart, not suicidal. Oh. Uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module. So, um, you have the gun already. If there's a weapon you can give me, hand over, I'll put to good use. Yeah, give me that thing, man. It is truly the end of all intelligence when the lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses. So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X-8. Just as X-8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletail and all the kids you hated, you little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sunjaculating into the gun, getting it warmed up. Sunjaculating? Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. All right. All and 
antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate codes view from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. My penis hands, yes. Uh, let me see here. Energy weapons. Energy cells have a high expenditure rate. Some extra reserve cells could offset. Yeah, give me some energy cells. Hmm, yes. I believe Watts Electronics tended to make the battery shelf life on the low end. They certainly did. Batteries for my vib vivisectors would always come up short right before climax. I think Watts manufactured hollow discs. Or was it hollow tapes? Never can keep those two straight. Anyway, we're out of small energy cells. Dala. You have some? Why do we... Actually, never mind. I don't even want to know. And no, I don't want to handle your batteries. Just pass them on to the lobotomite yourself. Um, let me see here. This sonic gun looks like an energy projectile. I'll have anything that spits lead. Yeah. What did it say? Spits lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns... Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, Lobotomite? Uh, this gun looks really hungry. I'd like to make sure it gets fed lots of bullets, yes. Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. Uh... These have been sterilized too, right? The sonic emitter should be sterilized and more than enough for you to encircle your warm hands around, cradling it gently with your finger muscles. Careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving, forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O. That only happened once! And I know you were behind stealth fielding my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O, you rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes! Surprise the things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. So you're saying this gun you gave me can disable force fields, yeah? Yes. Maybe. Well, no. Not currently. Yeah, we lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did. In one of the stupid labs. Or inside one of the stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Big Mountain shall be fielded with force forever. Um, okay. Alright, if there's nothing more, I need to go and get my brain from Mobius. Fine.
fine. So, yes. Get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Okay, I'll go get these technological wonders and see how much damage I can do. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? But it ought to climb. The lobotomite -like will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers so it might be stared at. My monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We could give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there. With my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. Let me see here. I can trade with it? Uh, let me see here. I don't have enough intelligence for that. Ah, damn. Let's try the bartering thing. So I can trade with the sink intelligence, then I'll need something to activate that function, won't I? I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What? Like, stuff? Things? Yes. Things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trade the thing's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid chip chokes on them. Okay, so we got some caps. This amount clearly represents a deficiency in the amount of caps needed. Yes, we need more. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. Okay, I can't go any higher. I'm so close, though. I'm so close. Okay. Um, so, having a store available will be helpful. It has a store connection, right? Yes. You may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go land your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Okay, that was by far the most entertaining, one of the most entertaining conversations I've had anyway. Maybe the most entertaining conversation I've had so far in uh, New Vegas. This is already like my favorite expansion, I think, so far. So uh, let me grab some more stuff around here. Scrap electronics and this stuff. There's Dr. Eight. Have a bit of more more look around here. Have you come for hello? Oh, I'll give you a hello. 
hello unsurpassed in all creation. I'm just getting your stuff, man. Just looting stuff, that's all. Nice, stealth boys and MF cells. Okay. But we are massively over encumbered though. Maybe I can use something to boost my uh, my strength here. Do some buff out. There we go. Now we got, yeah, there we go. What else we got up here? More, nope, oh, turn your pit boy light on. More stuff here. Yeah, MF cells, nice, some scrap metal. Can always use this stuff to craft more weapon toolkits, though I don't need them. Oh, get in here as well. So we have to go and find Dr. Mobius and uh, get our brain back and get stuff for these guys in exchange. Hopefully they will uh, give us our brain, install our brain for us once we have it. Dr. Mobius' glasses. Nice. Are those, like, unique? Because they're worth quite a lot. I'll check them out here in a second. Let me see. Dr. Mobius' glasses here. Uh, explosives plus 10. Wow, explosives plus 10, int plus 2, perception plus 2. That's pretty freaking awesome, man. That's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, put those bad boys on. How, they look cool? No, they look really dorky, but uh, you know what? That's fine. They're really good. I just love how this place looks, man. It just it looks all futury and you know, sciency and stuff. It's just just cool looking. Immediately makes me like this expansion quite a lot. So we've got syringer here, empty syringes, scalpel, pass, pass, pass. Don't touch that. Most likely, lots of mentats. These guys like their mentats. And some medics and um. Appears to be it over here. Oh, hold on. Dino toy, pass on that, but uh, interesting they have one. Easy lock here. The heck is that? Oh, radios maybe or speakers? Can't seem to loot any of this stuff over here though. Yeah, bottle caps. Oh yeah, here we go. Stim packs and Pass the dirty water, I think. But I'll take the pre-war money. Not sure what all we can trade. It sounds like just bottle caps is what we trade. Have you done all we asked? If not, we will not hesitate to ask again. <laughs> just, they're just funny, man. I just love them. They're just, I, I love these guys. They're hilarious. Even though they're kind of evil, they're they're hilarious. So, uh, I kind of want to go talk to Doctor. Clara, what the hell is all this? This must be... Or Do Dr. Dara, I believe it is, the female. This must be her room. The horny doctor. What is... What is she doing in here with these mannequins and the clothes and this... That's really strange, man. She has some strange fetishes, I think. But yeah, I want to go talk to her. She's a kinky old robot. I guess I could always come back here later on, but I'll take this stuff back over to uh, the sink, and then we'll drop it off there temporarily. Okay, is that all... We got a chemistry station? Yeah, I got a chemistry station here. I can probably make some, um... I can probably make some stuff right away here. Dr. O. I mean, There's Dala, yeah. You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank. Fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis fleshed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words, 
face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. All right. Um. Yes, the quick scribe jumped over to Lazy Paladin. Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouthful cavity. Wow, um, I can't help but notice your uh, fascination with the human body. What? Nonsense. Let's see here. Let's try closing our eyelids, uh, breathe deeply, and then stretch languidly. What? What are you doing? Let's try the next one. Turn and cough roughly, then scratch our nose. Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this filthy formography? Run your hands down the side of your face and exhale rapidly. Enough. I'm already intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of lobotomites. It, it infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Um, why don't you just give in? There's nothing wrong with looking at the human body. Perhaps, perhaps there is value in what you say. I, I did so enjoy breathing once, long ago. I could come back any time and just breathe if you'd like, Dr. Dalla. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. If you're ready, let me radar scan you. Slowly. So, she just kind of got off on me somehow. It's really weird, man. Um, so, I've got questions now. Let me see here. So, uh, who are you and what do you do here, Dr. Dalla? Why, my little bear of teddiness. I am Dr. Dalla, first head chief researcher of mineralogy and medicinal sciences. I have 211 doctorates in both applied sciences and techniques to apply those sciences. I also possess a degree in curiosity and advanced curiosity. That is merely schooling, however. When possible, I prefer fieldwork and observation to holotape eidetics. It has proven useful, especially now. I have become the expert on humanology and lobotomite behavior here at Big Mountain. My research doesn't descend into formography. It is only science. 211 doctorates. How's it even possible? Yeah. Why, we create not only scientific marvels here at Big Mountain, but new sciences as well. Everything can be quantified, categorized, and dissected until every group can be subgrouped or partitioned. So, kind of sounds like a little bit of bullshit there. Uh, first Head Chief Researcher. A lot of titles. What is a name without a title or a suffix for the sake of hierarchy? It is a long-standing quantification of personality and importance. We could not do without it. 
Surely you must be aware of the gravity of such attached appellations, just as surely as you must have a title. Well, they, yeah, they call me the courier. Oh, a mailman. A delivery man. Someone who takes parcels from place to place using their primitive feet or similar conveyance. You are the second one I've met in recent times. Very different specimens. There was another? Of course. You must have met others in your travels. This one had met other couriers, too. Although it sounded as if he hadn't met the correct one. He asked us all many questions. And then he asked a most perplexing one. We had to segment the event out of our memories for safety. What was the question? I do not know. Nor should we try to access it. Perhaps Klein has the logs. My evaluation would be to let your own curiosity go. I do not think that Klein remembers the conversation as being satisfactory. Interesting. So I should go and talk to Klein about... Oh, we got a quest here. He came and went. All right, we should go and talk to Klein about that. All right. Uh, so why did you remove my brain, though? And how? Oh, removing it is a simple procedure. Well, except the complications it can cause to the heart and spine. But once the heart and spine are gone, no trouble at all. Clamp the subject down. One laser incision around the skull. Crack. Snip. Done. The brain is finally free of the skin envelope, which is then kept automated for cleanup duties around Big Mountain. Lobotomites. With you, however, something is definitely wrong. We've never had a lobotomite who kept speaking after being forcibly lobotomized. I am relieved the pacification field is working. If it didn't, I would broadcast some concern to my colleagues about safety protocols. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's because we have a Tesla coil attached to us, and that is what is uh, basically linking us to our brain. Let me ask here, how am I still talking and walking around? That is a good question. My theory is that the Tesla coils in your brain pan are still connected to your brain somehow. It really could be anywhere. Brains are a lot smarter than most researchers give them credit for. We still have your spine and heart. If you were to somehow find your brain, wherever it slurped off to, you could humanically reduce yourself again. Humanically reduce myself, as in get my brain back into my head. Uh, I feel strange in here. Peaceful, but on edge. It is the pacification field emitters that are broadcasting into the emptiness of your skull. Without a brain, your aggression is suppressed in here. So... I guess probably they would not want me to shut off, but is there any way I shut off? Why would you want such a thing? You might surrender to your hormones and commit primal aggression on me, on us, again and again. Then I would have to return the favor, activating my vivisectors and gently lobotomizing you from behind. Not something I would relish doing. No, the only way to circumvent the field is to have a brain, and we extracted that like we do all the lobotomites here. Okay, other questions. Perhaps you are stuck in a looping gesture of verbal intercourse. Verbal intercourse, a looping gesture of verbal intercourse. Oh, Dr. Dalla. So what can you tell me about Dr. Mobius? Dr. Mobius? A monstrous brain creased with wrinkles of a thousand evils, with but one jaundiced eye with which to perceive the world. Exiled from the think tank for crimes too heinous to remain in recorded memory, and perhaps differences in research methodology. His one terrible eye forever peers at us, an eye of ever-increasing magnification. He watches from his dome in the Forbidden Zone, spying on us all. Wonder what he did that uh, they he got exiled. So I don't understand how the tech climb. I don't understand how the tech climb once will help. It'll all become clear. If not, at least we will have the technology here at the dome where all technology belongs. 
When we have all the technology, all the answers, we can share it with the world. Piece by piece, all will be in order, and all will be like Big Mountain. That sounds helpful, but yet rather ominous. If they want to turn everyone into lobotomites or, uh, you know, floating brains in vats, that probably is not the best for the world. Uh, what can you tell me about the Big Empty? The Big Empty? Now that's not a proper title for this research facility. You sound like previous test subjects that came here. This mountain, now Crater, encompasses the sum total of knowledge of humankind. It is Big Mountain, where all questions can be answered. You'll see. No matter what your questions, Big Mountain will provide the answers, as it has done for so many before you. Previous test subjects? Oh yes. We've had other subjects visit. It's why we had to calibrate the pacification field and warm up our brainial beams and vivisectors. Only a short time ago, we had three minus one subjects arrive, and they ruined several experiments and even injured two of our staff. It is a shame their brains left with them. With you, however, we have taken precautions to ensure that problem won't repeat itself. We've conditioned you so you can't speak of this place, discuss our secrets, or attempt to use force against us in any way. Isn't that nice? Yeah, not really, uh, but why did you say three minus one subjects before? Because three minus one is two. Two spoke to us, one after the other. One mean, one curious. But there was a third we didn't speak to. The last one is the minus one. It got traumatized, then taken to one of our medical centers for de-traumatization. A rather unsettling procedure. Uh, de-traumatization? So what happened with the visitors? Ask Dr. O. And you could have asked eight once, until he was severely damaged in the attack. We like him better this way. Oh, so that's why Dr. Eight is all messed up. Okay, so quest add when visitors attack. And doesn't say what we actually have to do here. Okay, uh, other questions. Okay, I think that's it. We've spoken enough, Dr. Dalla. Until our next interaction, my intriguing little lobotomite. Oh, we got to level up too. Uh, what was I doing here? I think I was working on probably barter. Would have been nice to have that maxed out, wouldn't it? Oh well, not a big deal. We're gonna get to everything max here without any problem, most likely. By the end, we get a perk as well? Yeah, we get a perk. Okay, gosh, I have no idea what perk I want here. Um, let me look through these real quick and I'll get back to you in a second. So I've put off this weapon handling for a while now and I think I wanna go ahead and get this. So basically it makes the strength requirements two points lower uh, than normal for me. So there are a couple of weapons I really couldn't use very well before. Like the Tesla can, I believe. It requires a bit of strength that I didn't really have enough for it. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get that. And uh, that way we can use everything a bit more efficiently. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, good to go. This is Dr. O here. All right, guys. Well, I, I know we just got here and everything. Um, oh, Dr. Wait, Dr. Klein's glasses is what that said. Worth a lot too. What does that do? Hold on, I have to wait until it goes my inventory here. There we go. Dr. Klein's glasses gives me repair plus one in plus one, or repair plus five in plus one in perception plus two. Like Dr. Mobius is better, it gives me plus two int, which is a bit better, I think. But uh, still pretty cool. But yeah, anyways, guys, I know we just got here and I still have to talk to the rest of the doctors here. But I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the episode. That was a lot of dialogue. It was very good dialogue. I really enjoyed it, but it was a lot of dialogue. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here. And we'll continue talking to the doctors and get to exploring the next episode. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. Welcome back to New Vegas. I'll see you next time.